which we've done without further ado, and we're going to share my screen. And hopefully you can see that. Great. Well, without further ado, I'm going to start the ball rolling and say good afternoon to everybody. Welcome to my study. It's our two o'clock session. And today we're going to talk all about Facebook for business. So for anybody who's a first timer on this, please, a very, very warm welcome. I have been sitting here, you know, for the last, well, I have moved in that time, but for the last 28 weeks we've been here. And uh, we're here every Tuesday afternoon. And so delighted um, to, uh, to be your guide for the next hour. Now there's normal, uh, normal rules apply. This is what we're gonna talk, we've got the chat line. I'm, I'm, I'm have to mute, mute, mute everybody so please accept my apologies for that um so we're using the chat line let's go back we are going to uh, record this uh, so that will be available on my youtube channel and also through the humber growth uh, channel and i will send you a copy of the slides together with any links so uh, you'll get you'll get that through uh, there's our twitter handle anyone wants to engage that way and as always, I say there is um, there is the opportunity for those of you who would like me to darken your door under the Humber Growth Program. There's the opportunity for one-to-one -one marketing support. So, yes, right. Catherine has asked, "How can we find your YouTube channel?" And I will endeavour to give the information there later. We could do so if you wish to subscribe. You will get copies of this and other musings. Now. So let's move swiftly. A lot to cover. A lot to cover. We're going to talk all today about Facebook business. But we know, as always, those of you who have uh, been before, uh, you, you will, you might notice we do a bit of a quiz. Uh, there will also uh, be some contrived humour uh, during the course of the afternoon. Please, please keep an eye out uh, for that. And um, uh, for those of you who are ironing as well, you know, behind your screen, you know, I hope it's going okay. For those of you who are a bit tidying. I enough and abuse you staring intently at the screen with your pieces of paper and your pen. Thank you. Gosh, hasn't a lot happened in the last week? Hasn't a lot happened last week? Goodness gracious. We've got a second vaccine. Second vaccine. Yeah, talk about that. That's a shot in the arm for everybody. Oh, yeah, all sad news, wasn't it? Sad news about um, Des O'Connor. Des O'Connor, you know, Des O'Connor died at the weekend, didn't he? It's so sad to, to see great entertainers like uh, like Des pass away. You know, uh, I wonder who's next. I guess so. We'll have to take your pick. And so, uh, without further ado, uh, we'll move on. So, my name is uh, Simon Shepherd. Uh, that's as in uh, red sky at night, shepherd's delight, uh, blue sky at night at daytime. So, welcome, welcome aboard. We're going to talk all about. Facebook, as you know, we don't want to disappoint anybody. We can't disappoint anybody. We've got to have our afternoon little quiz to get you all warmed up. Now, first quiz question, who's that? Who's that? So you, have to, you have to be a certain age group and a real challenge for you. Anyone want to, oh, we've got, I've got some answers on the chat line here already. I'll tell you what, oh yeah, Kevin. Oh, Sal, sorry. Yes, that, no, that, yeah, we're on the air. Those of you who are staring at the screen in a certain disbelief, you have to be a certain age group. No, that's Bamba Gascoigne. He of you no, know, he of the um, first presenter of University Challenge, and that is Bamba right now. Yeah, Mark knows the answer, showing his age. Yes, there we go. Look at that. Doesn't he look a bit like Jonathan Price? Yeah, top man. Top man. That was a that was a, a Bamba Gascoigne impression. Right, let's move. Let's move. Let's move on. Right, uh, next one. Who's this? Who's this? These are all entrepreneurs. That's a clue. They're all entrepreneurs. All marketing people. Who is that for us today? Got, have we got pen and paper ready? Who's that? Come on, on the chat line. Who's going to answer that one? Who's going to chant? Uh, nope. Oh, Dave. Dave's the man. Dave, yeah, get in there. That is John DeLorean. He of the famous car made in um, made in Belfast. 
who, uh, yeah, well-known car. Uh, some of you are thinking, what's all this got to do with Facebook? Well, you know, I thought I'd pull that in there because this is back to the future. <laughs> oh, I, you know, I, I actually laugh at my own jokes these days. Yeah, but, you know what that film was about? It's all about the power of love. Right, let's move on. Who's that then? Come on then, you won't get that one. You won't get that one. Who's this famous, famous? Oh no, don't tell me Dave's not again. Who's this? I tell you what, have you seen this before, Dave? Have you seen this before? He's been on. He's on fire today, Dave. Who that is? I, I, do, I do know because I've, I've prepared the presentation, so I know the answer. Steve Wozniak. Ooh, ooh, Steve Wozniak. Well, he. If you anyone seen the film Steve Jobs? Anyone seen the film Steve Jobs? He was his mate and co-founder and co and um, Apple guy. Yeah. So there we go, Steve Wozniak. Yeah. Look like he enjoyed himself. Right. Now then, who's that? Aha! That's caught you out. Who's that? Oh no, don't tell me he's got another one. If he's got another one, he, I'm gonna, he's going to have to... Uh... Oh yeah, Deborah. Deborah. Way! Yes! This gentleman was a bit of a legend. It, you know, I, I've got a scarf like that, you know. Uh, a bit of a legend. Sir Clive Sinclair. He of the first person, I believe, to invent invent pocket, uh, slimline pocket calculator and the c5 yeah there we go now come on you won't get that one and it's not that bloke from men behaving badly right then smarty pants who's this chat lines the chat lines gone quiet oh no okay well, no, he's done it again it's not donald trump honestly honestly that You've all you've all used this product. Not Brian Cox. Not Brian Cox. Very. You've all used this product, and you've probably all used this product today. Ah. No prizes given out for this one. That gentleman. A bit hard. It's a hard one. This one. Actually, hard one. Larry Page. He of one of the co-founders of Google, and, and a special prize. If you can tell me who his partner was, and don't go googling it. That's not a joke, by the way. Oh, there you go. No, nope, no, nope, don't take his fat. Let's move on. Let's move on. Right then, who's that? Marketing quiz. An absolute hero. Ah, who's going to have a stab at that one? Yes, Colonel Sanders. Hmm. Now, Colonel, Colonel Sanders, the K, here's a great, you know, if, if you ever want us to read a little, read a story that is inspiring, starting a business, that gentleman there was penniless at the age of 65. I think he, had a, he invested $100, which was his pension or social security as an America, um, in his business. There we go. And look what happened next. I think he has a record number of failures, about 1,000. But what a legend. Anybody who was lucky enough, bit of a story for me, a bit of an anecdote here, who's ever been to Louisville, Kentucky, well worth a trip to a um, great place, Louisville, home of Muhammad Ali, Colonel Sanders, uh, where my bank, Fort Knox, etc. But yeah, all an inspiring business story, Colonel Sanders. Right, last, last ones. Who's that then? Who is that? Who is that? No, I bet no, one, no one's going to get that. No one's going to get that. Yeah, you see, he should have shown the beard. Can't give him away easily off. Who's that? The answer's on his forehead. Oh, no. Who's got that one? Beans. God. Mark. Mark, come on. Get real. That is Howard Hughes. Howard Hughes. Now, Howard Hughes had four ambitions in life. You know this? The world's richest man. The world's greatest aviator, the world's greatest film producer, the world's greatest golfer. And he claimed he achieved three of those four things. You know which one he didn't achieve? He did. He also, yes, he wasn't the first famous golfer. The Spruce Goose. So anyone goes to, anyone been to, uh, well, I went there, oh gosh, into Los Angeles to see the Spruce Goose, the world's largest flying machine. There we go. Now, who's that? We'll get, don't we get into there? We'll get we'll get to the main event in a minute. Don't worry, we'll get there. Who's that? Anyone want to take that one up? 
and there's a yes it is it's jeff so there we go that was today's quiz and who is that who is that yes who is that you can't just write facebook you can't just write facebook come on last one that linda is correct well done linda mark sal and everyone who's got that that gentleman is mark zuckerberg so and that's who we're going to talk about today there we are there he is mark zuckerberg mark zuckerberg founded this particular organization called the Fa the facebook on february the 4th 2004 can you remember what you were doing in 2004 don't make me blush remember what you're doing a long time ago 16 years ago no less so that was the image on the facebook now there's an extra special prize if anyone can tell me whose image that is on the original the facebook i'll give you a clue I'll give you a clue I'll give you a clue uh, well should i give you a clue on this dog day afternoon no uh no that, there was a clue not john lennon that opportunity his image was behind all this code on the facebook he was the godfather of images on the facebook so it all began this way mark was sitting in his heart and he invented this face smash and look at that not a politically correct it was kind of like a dating who, and he had to choose between which one of those two who's hotter click to choose not the most pc thing but he was experimenting with activities in that regard so using images and so it became a facebook is a student directory featuring photos and basic information and you didn't have there wasn't an online version at harvard so mark and his merry gang decided to make one now anyone find it netflix you'll probably find this or on prime great film the social network which which tells the story about the time at harvard uh, and whether our friend mark actually plagiarized somebody else's idea the two brothers and the other guy who they actually ultimately settled out of court then it wasn't his but a well worth a visit to watch the social network so let's move swiftly along <laughs> And do you know where that is? I know you might like that. It looks like uh, their business is uh, blossoming there. And he's, do you know where that is? Facebook headquarters. Mm. Yeah, who got that one? Silicon Valley. Yes, it's, uh, it's Facebook HQ. There it is. Nestled there. So let's move swiftly along and tell you a little bit of a story before we move on. He, he became the, the 23 the world's youngest self-made billionaire good for him and i think this is i'm correct and maybe wrong now he's the only person under 40 40 years old in forbes list of 20 richest people there we go and facebook oh, little, another little quiz facebook's logo is blue because hey when you see you're watching emmerdale tonight you'll be thinking hmm, i know something that i didn't know before so you'd be saying, I wonder where Seth Armstrong is. No? So, well, go on then. Who's going to get this one? Harvard Colours. Phil, great guess. Anyone else before we push the answer in front of your very eyes? Facebook's logo is blue because... Mark Zuckerberg has red-green colour blindness spelt the American way. Do you notice how I smoothly used american spelling there there we go red green color by little yeah you see you know every day is a learning day he's, he's in he speaks ancient languages latin you can speak mandarin and i'm sure i could put a joke in there he met his wife in line for the bathroom at harvard yeah i wonder where my, i wonder where i met my wife i know well, last time i saw my wife in the divorce courts only a joke. Uh, he's on Twitter. He's on Twitter. He's only posted at least 16 times. 
Yeah, he's on Twitter, the lad. You'll find him there. Yeah, always keeping the opposition. And he's an admirer of Steve Jobs, no less. And they both share, they both have the same phrase on their business card. Mmm, there we go. Well, that's all, that's it. So that's all about, and there he is. There he is, a more modern picture. And those of you who are learned enough will know who, who me is sitting next to. Yeah, I wonder who knows who he's sitting next to. You don't? I'll tell you. Well, oh, we've got, we've got, oh, I'm, Imran's joining us. So there we go. Who's he sitting next to? Oh, got the chat line again. Obama? No. I don't know. I think, I don't know. But I think on the right, he's to his right, is a lady called Cheryl Sandberg, who is the chief executive now of Facebook. There we go. Look at her. Look her up. Now, here's a little tip for you. You know, he's a, he, uh, not quite in the Bill Gates mode, but Mark Zuckerberg is a philanthropist. So many of you may have applied for business grants through our learned friends at the Humble App. Give you a shout out. Yeah, thank you. Always keep in contact with the paymasters. But you can also find a small business grants program run by Facebook. Go onto the website and register. It is winging its way across the Atlantic. Check it out. Remember where you heard it first. Mm. Facebook, small business grants. They are. Right, quiz time again. The next slide is going to th show, and I've shown this one before, so you should get this right. The most popular social media channels are. Do anyone know the top three? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. a little drink now. While you have it, were you scratching that on your bit of paper? Mm. Right. Can I also know, you know? Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter says, Tracy, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now Zoom. Ooh. Well, I'm sorry. One more guess before we move on. TikTok says Tracy, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Wrong, 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 wrong. I'm smug. I've got the answer. Because it's here. Next slide. Oh, quick look on the chat line. Pinterest, Snapchat. Keep guessing. There you go. The most popular social media platforms in 2020. Number one, Facebook. Second, YouTube. Third, WhatsApp. And Facebook Messenger. Fourth, and WeChat for fifth, which people like Kevin in business in China will know. And you'll see that on the, there are four of the top six are all Facebook products. Instagram, Messenger, WhatsApp and Facebook. So we'll cover those. Now the key thing with marketing on social media in particular, these are statistics here relating to the UK market. It's to know who your audience is and what you are trying to do. So my, many of you who have, who have survived these webinars before will know that I speak, marketing is very much about who is your audience, what's your message, how can you reach them? It's very useful to know where, where, who your audience is and where they are. You can see atypically in Facebook, you've got about 32 million UK users between the ages of 25 to 54. Those of you are children or children or teenagers will know Facebook is a bit for old. Facebook is for old. It's, we're all doing something else. And you, you would describe that principally Facebook has been used for building relationships. That's personal and professional and probably the best tool for brand loyalty and you look across the other pla all the other platforms which we don't have time for today to see what they're doing now i have shown this before so what's happening in the apps worldwide well, it's very swiftly the most downloadable app has been in in quarter two has been tiktok then you uh, i think sal mentioned zooms there and Facebook, and you can go forth, but then you flip over to the right hand side and you'll see that Facebook is still the most actively used. And underneath that, the most actively used are three other Facebook products. Messenger, and we'll come on to those, and using Facebook for business. So in simple terms, Facebook has one and a half billion 
daily active users. Five times the population of the US, 20% of the world's population, and it's still growing. It would have, I think it claims to have about over 2 billion monthly users. So it's a beast. Now, today, for the next short while, I'm going to talk about Facebook in terms of inbound. We won't, we don't have time, unfortunately, to cover Facebook ads. They will be for another day. But thinking very much about an inbound strategy that's, that you would like to perceive as helpful and relatable to your audience. So really the key thing here is to understand your goals of your customers and then kind of partner with them. So really what you want to be is where they are spending their time and to avoid not missing them. That means you really, you know, you, you need to be on Facebook. I would think there's quite a un, hard to justify not having some form of Facebook presence, irrespective of whether you're a consumer or a service or a business to business, because your clients will be there. I'll give you an example, which is extreme on this. I have a client that supplies equipment, to the police. And you know, police officers are on Facebook and they follow this company on Facebook. Now, so you can imagine a lot of the posts on Facebook for this company who are just marketing in very general terms, even account for something that may be considered inappropriate or not necessary, but they are. Police officers do have a life outside of their day-to-day -day world. So really, my advice to you is to think about, it's about relationships and building relationships was a theme I will like to return to in long term relationships so here is your marketing plan so what i'd love you to do is to create and distribute quality content that's helpful for your users create and distribute quality content that's helpful and then allow you know you want to connect with consumers interested in a brand so content and you want people you want people to be starting to get interested in your brand that is in essence your two line marketing plan but not to be spammy annoying or deceiving okay so what these words come straight from the facebook website they advise you to tell your story beautifully on any device. That's a nice word, isn't it? Tell your story beautifully on any device. So, who can remember that? Ah, oh, I think, you know, I'm going to go and do, do another ah. Oh, anyone recognize anybody on that photograph? You get a special prize if you know them all. Yes, anyone recognize anybody there? Well, you've got some names cropping up. Judy Dench, yes. Bernard Cribbins, Mark, yeah, absolutely right. For those of you of a certain age group, you might be in David Jason. Jeff Canori. Some of you are sitting there thinking, what the heck is he talking about? Who's that? What's that old bloke on about? We've got some very famous people there who we're on Jack and Ori, which is a child's uh, television program, but it's all about telling story, a narrative told in an interesting way. You might wish to think about your own social media and your own Facebook as being a narrative and a story told in an interesting way. And you're right, you've got people like uh, Jan Francis, Judy Dench, David Jason, Bernard Cribbins, Alan Bennett. You've also got Kenneth Williams. <laughs> well, best carry on now. You can't, you, can't, you can't even write them, can you? Right, let's move swiftly along. So you're really focusing very much in terms of you know, a narrative over a longer period of time. You're not necessarily posting for tomorrow. So you've got to think about it being a love story or a narrative told over a period of time, building relationships. That story was told over how many years? 
Over 30 years that story was told. Mm -hmm. I was up to eighty what. Do you know when I saw that film? I saw it on May the 4th. You know, and you know, I, I was gutted. I was gutted with when Han, Han was killed. Spoiler alert, he was killed by his own son. I stated absolutely I was. Yeah. There we go. Right, anyway, so who would like, and Yoda speak again, who would like a free Facebook marketing plan, would you? I haven't said that in Yoda voice. A, like a free Facebook marketing plan, would you? Well, I'm going to give you one. Oh, but I tell you what, how about this? Did you know this? Well, no, you didn't. Go on to the Facebook for Business website. And they will, if you, there is an interactive plan, as you can see in the screen there, to create a Facebook plan and also an Instagram plan. And what you have to do is, in effect, tell, tell Facebook all about your clients and what you're trying to do, and it will create a plan for you. Now, how many of you knew about that? Yeah. No, that, was my, that was my Alan Bennett voice. Yeah, so there you go. Create yourself a marketing plan, Facebook for business. Well, hey. Are you writing that down? Right, let's crack on. Think of it this way. Your three main goals with your marketing for Facebook, I, I would imagine are this. You would like to increase your awareness online. You want to connect with customers and you want to get more business online. I'm gonna take you through some steps to do that and conclude today's webinar at one minute to three with some tips. Right, so how to increase your awareness online? Well, naturally the first thing to do is to create a Facebook page. And here you've got an example of um, Little Lemon. And they managed to do this in a jiffy. And you can see the sort of zest they put into this. They created a fantastic image. And they talked about what open now relative to the current situation. A cafe serving healthy and tasty treats, link. So the first thing I'd advise any of you to do is to go into your Facebook page. If you haven't done so, look at the banner image. Is it really? portray what you do and so a fantastic image would be the great starting point and to create a page got a question on the chat line here oh, one two right moving on so create a facebook page so here's an example of Burt's bees and what they've done is create a, a, a you know user hashtag change for nature very and the Put their brand within the circle and then they've got their own um, domain. So you can see what they've done, a very simple message. I've seen so many uh, uh, pages with very complicated or uh, calls to action, all sort of things. A very powerful image on your Facebook page. I'll give you an example of a, of a business here called the Boston Coat Company. You've got the opportunities you can see there to add a cover, what they've done, you can see, is add a, a coat there, which is catering for the weather there in, um, in, in, in Boston. They put their description in there, which is fantastic. I'll read it to you. Boston Coat Company is your favorite online store for ethically sourced outwear inspired by the diverse Boston seasons. So capturing the essence of the business. And there, the image also reflects that. As you know, doing business in Boston is no tea party. But it's a you know, you can see what they're doing there, and then they will you can use your page time is so short today to actually add all the bits about your about their company. And naturally, the key thing here, if you haven't done so already, or creating a page, is to create your own page username which will be very beneficial e to remember the Boston Coat Company. So very simple stuff about creating your own page and being reflective of your brand. What? So you've gone on now, he's talking about something completely different. Well, Facebook and Instagram are brother and sister. So I cannot suggest or advise enough that you not only have a Facebook account, but you also 
create alongside that an Instagram account. As you can see, Little Lemon, and don't worry, I'm not taking the pith. Little Lemon, I've done that as well. So, you know, have an Instagram account as well. I'll explain why in a moment. And the, the first, so once you've created the account, is then share content, which we'll revisit in about 10 minutes time about the different types of content you can share. But I will tell you this in advance, picture paints a thousand words. But I'll tell you what paints a lot more, video. So the next thing you'd think about is people to see your product or service using live videos. And native video in, in Facebook has far more impact than setting up links. I'll return to that in a moment. And the key thing here, as you can see, this business is no, they're not being shellfish or they're not trying to flex their muscles, but they're, they're trying to express themselves, you know, with funny, engaging stories. So they've got an image there, uh, you know, of the, of the seafood, and it's really powerful. So this is where I would encourage everybody, not just post the bland. To, you know, there's an expectation on social media to take a calculated risk to express yourself on engaging stories which you can obviously do within Facebook stories as well as in your feed. So they're the key actions in trying to uh, engage online. The next thing is to think about how you would connect with customers. Okay, increasing awareness of you and this is, uh, I'm just going to choose this particular uh, removal company. Does anyone know the name of that room, of, uh, of that removal company? Any, any takers on the chat line for that? Anyone? No. Yes, it was, it, um, a bit of a control, but it's Pickford's. Yeah. <laughs> it, Football fans, if he's the best goalkeeper in England, I'm a Dutchman. Right. Anyway, so think about a, an example of a removal business. Okay, what you would do in terms of uh, your presence online, connecting with your customers. The first thing you would do in this situation here is use, give people the option to use private messaging. This is the integration between Messenger, WhatsApp, and Facebook. So you want people in this situation, can I get a moving estimate? You want to encourage customers to communicate with you. I would also suggest in that type of business, obviously, forgive the Americanism, is to join groups, particular groups that are relevant to you. Now you'll all probably find in whole Grimsby, wherever you may be in the Humber region, that there will be relevant groups relating to you that you would choose to join. So I'd encourage you to, to search high and low for relevant groups where you can be influencers or to start your own group. Now, next thing in terms of increasing your presence is to help friends and family like your page. There's a tool within Facebook, you know, I did it. I asked both my friends um, to, to like my page and they, they kindly obliged, so I got 100% success rate. So you want your, you inviting people, use the tool effectively to invite people to like your page. It's a great a natural starting point uh, for your business. And then, did you know, within your tool, in the days of social responsibility and awareness, that you consider the, the fundraising tool that exists there either to raise funds from a charitable basis or for your business. So there are different things you can do in that way. And the third element is to try and get more business online. So how do I do that? Well, first thing I would suggest that you do, if you to be on Facebook, to be on Instagram with business accounts on both, and then to actually use the Facebook and Instagram shops. You can see in this example, the lucky shrub, 
you know, is, is selling items which you can add to the basket and buy. So you're buying off Facebook and off Instagram. So obviously it's only, a, you know, it's only a little acorn here, but you, you can really grow your business in this area. So to actually sell your product as well as you've got the option in using marketplace as well. But Facebook page, business page, Instagram business page, have the opportunity if your business allows to actually create a shop. You've also got the chance here, not not a not a staged photograph there, is it? Manage the bookings. You've got an appointments tool as well there. You can see for people to make when it was when it was appropriate to go and visit. So you've also got the appointments tool to add to your website. And people can book, particularly would suit restaurants or, or or wherever it might be. But in this situation as well, the key thing as well always is to think about calls to action. So by putting up images as the as the uh, here, you've got the option to create action you can learn more shop now or send messages it's, it's, it's spoon feeding um your customers you know, in fact you're planting seeds here for your customers with these action buttons i can't by the way i can't keep up the 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 these arboreal metaphors anymore so the other way you might think obviously then is to add events these obviously can be online or offline so in this situation they're doing planting with a family you can invite people on facebook to come to events or that's not bad 25 dollars now the store manager and a fantastic tool not just using linkedin but also for recruitment so there's there's some ways in which you, uh, you know in terms of building a brand getting customers online and also actually shop online these are the things here now confession time these content i put in front of you come straight from the facebook website these are things that they are advising you to do very simple process you can see a lot of the activity in terms of how they would suggest you follow but here i will now take you through some of the key advantages and things you can do in actually using facebook Firstly, you've got the opportunity, if you're going to run ads, to allow people to target very narrow or very specific customer bases. You will have your own customer data, but then also you can create a custom audience, which is the Facebook data. If all your audience was, for example, golfers aged 30 to 50 living in Yorkshire, you know, for, uh, you know Facebook could create a, a secondary audience that isn't associated with you that's a custom audience on the data they've given so it's a, facebook probably is the best tool for advertising because you can be so specific in your audience targeting secondly one of the great things to do and how many of you are using this who uses the custom tabs mm. well coca-cola did and this is the real thing here, because you can see they've created various different custom tabs or pages within the overall page relating to the home page, events, videos, etc. You can create specific tabs, pages within the overall Facebook page there that may be more neat, specific to your audience, as I mentioned about photos, events, etc stories whatever it may be the custom tabs present an opportunity for you to use now facebook contests or competitions here is a great example of the cupcake coffee box so what they're doing they're engaging with other local retailers and they're giving away a voucher to spend at another retailer all they had to do was like and share this post and it was a retailer that was close by to them it's a fantastic way of getting engagement as well as co-promoting something else they support the businesses by mentioning them on their facebook page so all they were offering was a 25 pound voucher to shop somewhere else they got 556 likes to reach 40,000 people and 
10,000 engagement. That's more than Princess Anne's ever been on. So you can, you can see that just by being actually adding and mentioning other businesses and cross-referring, there's a great opportunity. Here is another example of a supplement business doing a similar thing. They just invited their customers to ask which products they wanted to include in their winter sale. And you can see the game, same results. They've got comments, they've got reactions, they've got shares. You're actually carrying out in both situations some form of engagement. But we all like a competition or a quiz and a prize. So there's two examples there. As you'll send, as I'll get, you'll get a copy of the slides, you'll see these. Now, what's this doing on the screen? Well, it's probably the biggest single opportunity that people miss is that when you are posting next on Facebook, as the cupcake company did, was actually to mention or tag in another business or even to look at tagging in a customer or to, because it's the best way of seeking very simple engagement. I think it, you'll, they'll appear in their feed and they will hopefully automatically share the post. So please think about when you're writing next, to use the at sign. Now, some of you are thinking, what about the old hashtag, Simon? What about the hashtag? Well, do hashtags work on Facebook? And the answer is they've been on Facebook for quite some time, but not used to their full extent. But they have two major advantages to make the post searchable. So hashtag hull or hashtag wherever it might be, you've got a better chance of making your post found if people are conducting a search. And there's a chance to be more interactive that way. But I would strongly counsel against just, and I'm sorry to put it in these terms, being lazy and just taking an Instagram post with 30 hashtags and dumping it into Facebook or vice versa. I would I personally advocate making bespoke content tailored for each platform. Oh. Now, how many hashtags should we include? Well, there is your answer. The more you put in, the less engagement you get. So for those of you who may be cross-posting and using the hashtag post the, or from Instagram into Facebook, might not be getting the bang for your buck. So putting one hashtag in, or even you know, two or three, ideally so it flows through the content as opposed to listing them at the end of the post, I think might be a more pertinent way to go. Quick example here. Uh, uh, you'll see this in the slides, Adobe were posting on Instagram uh, the, the, and then posting on Facebook. But you can, you, you'll see when I send it to you, they're using different or not as many hashtags and often in Facebook and in Instagram, they actually write the content, but then they comment on their own posts, which is a great way of getting additional hashtags or mentions in as well. But when you see those two examples, you'll see you use the same picture, but different means of posting. So one question often asked is where can I find hashtags and what are the most popular ones? Well, excuse me, hashtagify me is a great way to get a great site to visit. You can see the hashtags that are trending and most common. So have a little play there. Right. Facebook is a great platform for video marketing. It is. Because, as the slide suggests, if you are using Facebook native videos, you are likely to get far greater number of interactions per video than any other platform. You'll film something like here. This gentleman is showing a guy who was 90 years of age going off in a micro light 
And he was taking photograph, fa video and then posting it to Facebook as opposed to linking to Facebook. So it's a native video and you like it to get far greater engagement. So using native videos. And then on your home page, you've got the opportunity to add your video there, but always, 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 that's three always, add a call to action. Don't just give people information. I mentioned earlier, you can do so much inviting people, doing things, always add a call to action on your posts, videos, etc. As you can see in this type of situation, where they've used the thumbnail and they've created content and you've, you've got something there to build on. So think carefully about always what you want people to do. So Facebook Live, to actually create live video is a fantastic way to, to do all sorts of different things. I'll explain some of the things in a moment you can do on Facebook Live. Here was an example that, that Starbucks did. They went out with their representatives in, and talked about volunteering and it was all filmed live. So you've got the opportunity as well to use this on other platforms. So think about, you may be in places, wherever they might be, where you want to use live video. And just like in the BBC, you've got the opportunity to, put, to create playlists and to put things in a particular order with your videos. You've got that facility, obviously, if it's combined with the likes of the custom tabs. And finally, in terms of advantages, you've then got fantastic information for audience insights. If, depending on the number of views you've got, you've got information relating to who your audience is. So it's such a godsend in marketing to have science behind you. So think about using the insights as well. So finish off just for five minutes on just some very simple, quickly quick tips to use Facebook. Firstly, to make sure you've got a consistent brand. So if you're putting an image in your header and you're also on other platforms, make sure you're using the same one. With the caveats that I've seen very clever things done and a golf club, I know local to me is a great example of this whereby they've got four images of the golf course, which they alternate on Facebook. And those four images are spring, summer, autumn, winter. A photograph taken in front of the 18th green with the clubhouse behind from the same spot, four images, and they change that each year. How clever, simple is that? Do that across all your platforms. But you don't want to be the pub bore. Now, one thing I would say about posting on Facebook, I think one of the biggest challenges a lot of businesses face is it's a disproportionate that they post too much and don't engage enough. So what I'd encourage you to do is to think about original, funny, engaging stuff that you, avoid, you post on Facebook, but as it clearly says there, you don't avoid posting too often because people think you live on the computer, you will become the pub bore. So think carefully and the answers are here. Clearly suggesting, depending on the number of followers you've got, if you've got more followers, you can actually have more posts. But if you've got a small, number of followers it's generally saying that you would post probably somewhere between one and five times once a week or so on your your platforms it doesn't have to be there all the time but you i would encourage you to actually be commenting on posts and engaging with others and also post and, and repurposing other material ha so oh, the question always asked is what the best times to post on Facebook? Well, there's your answer. <laughs> now, this is very much related to, to consumer. We can see that, uh, that often um, you see Sunday morning, Saturdays, and at certain times of the day, there are some you know, clear places and go where you can seek greater engagement. 
by posting at certain times of the day. Sometimes you want to hit people when they're sitting in front of the TV at night time. But experiment with what works for you, not casting tablets of stone. Now, if you're on, if you are running ads on Facebook, you've got all the measurement tools you'll need. So that's one of the best ways of running ads. That you can see exactly who it's reached, when it reached them, their age, their location, their gender. You've got some fantastic tools in, in, the, in measurements if you're going to run ads on Facebook. Great place to go. So if you, get, you know, even just running a very inexpensive ad, you've got the tools to see if it works. Critically, I would encourage everybody to think very much about all the time, all the time, building relationships as these two. And to think about that. Next thing to think of is, to, of course, good slide this one. Entice your fans here. Yeah. Sorry if the image is a bit grainy. And uh, jokes are getting cornier. But all these tips now are things you can do to entice your fans. Think really carefully about the openings. Don't just write, here's my latest board proof. How about, this might seem ridiculous, but it's been proven to work. That's our scene, those type of things, a very strong opening statement that is designed maybe to shock, but look at newspapers, it's all in the headline. So think about creating a strong, thought provoking, provocative opening statement. And think about the way you post. Here are two examples of businesses that have taken fantastic, engaging, unique photographs. And if you've got film images that are a little left field, that your eye wanders in those, you've got a far better way than taking some sterile or some shutter stock images. Think really carefully about taking a risk but you can use the lights of eye picky so you can see the original photo and there's that particular app you can use to smarten up some of your images also to think you may choose to think about using infographics as well very they're, they're using canva and other sites like that you can create some fantastic infographics Alternatively, you know, there's again within Canva, use quotations rather than just put something bland up there to actually use a quotation and put it in a, you know, in a nice graphic design way. And then to think about the use of memes. Now, does everyone know which is the most used meme? Well, on the next slide, you're going to see the top 10. And most popular emojis, and there they are. How many of you are using those? Lots, you know, you can see the one which is most common. So, again, often you can bring life to posts by using the right emojis. And to think that you, by creating what is known as evergreen content, you can use content again and again and again. You just may need updating. Great place to spy on your competitors. Facebook is fantastic. They cannot see who's visited their site. You can just use the likes of Hootsuite to see what people are posting on Facebook. So always use a chance to spy on your competitors. To think about your image and about presentation. This guy is now going to be the tourism officer, I think, in Barnard Castle, but it was all about image and trying to portray things. So think about your own image. And sometimes, you know, that's my holding snaps there. To, as I mentioned, to take something more of a calculated risk. Use images that entice and excite. And to avoid exactly this. With so many bland posts out there with little engagement. So if you're taking a chance with images, photographs, strong statements, I think you're more likely get a little bit more success. But finally, 
these are the kind of things you can do very quickly. You can ask questions. You can use branded graphics like Canva there to portray things. You can give advice and tips here. Take risks, be destructive, and don't look back. The best advice I've ever got. And a great image there. It's asking a question with an interesting image. Show behind the scenes, like here on National Pet Day, which this uh, place did. Show some trending topics. Stay home, Dr. Seuss. Again, it's in keeping with everything we have at the moment. Exciting product photos, Oreo. Don't just show a boring packet of biscuits. Show the images, take a chance. So much you can do. Here is a chance to put offers on. Then you've got a very simple reason, 50% off and a fantastic image. People are enticed by that. Again, depending on what time you're posting. So much you can do. And to use video where possible. How-to videos, new products, thank yous to customers, testimonials, and ads. Lots you can do in terms of the way that you use videos. As shown here, but look at this. This is shown on Instagram, but also on Facebook. Six seconds of Starbucks in showing Crema. You can use those type of tools yourself with some of the Magisto and Canvas this world to create great little videos. So there end of the lesson. Facebook for business. And in the next 30 seconds, I'm going to conclude with a few futures. WhatsApp for business. It is probably the next thing that's coming. So you may wish to start experimenting by having WhatsApp business app and integrating that with your Facebook page and a great way of communicating. It will be probably the next best thing that's coming. And then also, because they're all coming together to use Messenger for business, people like Lego have used that. It's a great way, and it integrates with chatbots as well. So Messenger and WhatsApp are probably the future in terms of the integration between WhatsApp, Messenger, Facebook, and Instagram. And without further ado, I promised you I'd finish at 2.59. I've covered a lot of ground today. Hopefully you found it engaging. I will go to the chat line in a minute. You'll get a copy, a uh, link through the recording, slides, etc. And it, there's always the offer there for some additional help. And without further ado, what's next week all about? Well, it's all about brand. We'll be talking next week all about brand. So thank you very much for your time. I'm conscious of, I'm going to go over the questions. And if anyone has got anything here, I'm going to see if anyone has any questions. If not, I'm going to say fond farewell. And thank you to everybody. I just hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've uh, found some tips there. And I'm more than happy just to hang around for a few minutes if anyone has any personal questions. Personal questions? Not personal questions. Any specific questions? I'll gladly answer those. But if not, I'll see you same time next week. Simon, can I just ask one question? You can. <laughs> yeah. You, you know whenever you're talking about the at sign and yeah. the hashtag what's the difference between the two what's the significance right a, a, a hashtag refers to a topic so for example hashtag brexit or hashtag covid19 the at sign refers to an individual or a company right does that link to the website or the it, it go it doesn't link automatically it will link if you use the at sign it will link to the person's Facebook page, or if you're using the apps on LinkedIn or Instagram, it'll link to those social media platforms. Okay, yeah. Hashtag okay. is referring to a topic or a trend. Yeah. Well, if that helps, George, yeah. Right. Simon. Oh, go on. Me. Who's first? I'm trying to 
you know, every time you give us wonderful presentations and I really love your slides, it's probably the wrong background. I, I'm always wondering how you made it. You know. Can you repeat the question, Catherine? I missed it. The PowerPoint background. Well, yeah. Um, big shout out to the council. I have to. The, 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 I'm, I'm delivering this on behalf of Humber Growth Hub, so I have to use their branding. So that's no, 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 not a girl, not a girl. My. SME background, not that background. Your personal wrong background. Can you please go to the previous slides? Not this one. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it, they're, built, uh, they're built uh, in within, um, within a lot of the options you can create within PowerPoint. Oh, so you basically cho chose yeah. this wrong background. That's right. That's oh, right. I see. Okay. I like it. Very beautiful. Good. Well, I'm glad you do. Yeah, thank you. Great. Thank you, Catherine. Mark has asked a question. What was the site you mentioned about infographics? Yes, uh, yeah, Simon, you mentioned it as if it was like a, uh, uh, sorry, uh, was it like a stock place for infographics? Yeah, there is, there is, uh, it does, you can use Canva for this, but there's also, uh, I think it's... How do you spell that, Simon? C-A-N-V-A is Canva. There's oh, also okay. info... Oh, hyphen grammar. Remind me, I'll make a note to send it to you. Because okay. there are very simple ways in which to create infographics, which, you know, rather than put up a long winded explanation of statistics to use something yes. like that, far, no, that, far better. But yeah. Deborah's saying Canva's great. So I'm going to, I use Canva all the time, you know, and I get commission every time I mention it. So yeah, use Canva. <laughs> Keep saying it another time, 10 times, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, that, that's great. Thanks. Good. I didn't know that. That's that's brilliant too. Awesome. Well, I'll go and investigate that. But yeah, yeah. drop me. In. Please do. Yeah. That's All right. Little, thank you. That's another mm. pound you owe me, Mark. Yeah. Well, I'm running out of money at this rate. <laughs> you know. Jeez. I'm, I'm having to read the piggy bank next week, Simon. <laughs> yeah. YouTube. Get yeah, Quinet. I will send a copy. So you get a copy of the slides. You get an invitation to next week's extravaganza, and. Those of you, you know, who don't want to watch Emmerdale, I will send you all I'm a celebrity. You can work, you can I'll send you a link to my YouTube channel. Yeah. All right. You Thank you, Stephen. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Yeah, well, yeah. Good to see you. Simon, can you please also send the infographics link to me? Yeah, I'll send you I'll I'll make it out of the infographics as well. It's no problem. Thank so you. infographics, yeah, no problem. Great. Um, Simon, I ju can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I just remember once you told